Welcome to the overview of embedded systems and Internet of Things. My name is Girish. I'm a faculty at VLSI Guru handling the embedded systems and Internet of Things course. I'll be taking you through the introduction of this program, what we offer at VLSI Guru. To introduce ourselves, VLSI Guru is a premier, premier training institute who is offering quality trainings in the area of VLSI, Embedded System Software and Internet of Things. Let's see what these three terms are. VLSI is an abbreviation of very large scale integration. This is a process through which a large number of electronic components like transistors are packed into a tiny space with the help of the latest technology. This is the process which is used for the design and development of various hardware components in today's computers. So if you open a computer, anything, let's say a laptop or a desktop, you can see the printed circuit board. There. On the printed circuit board, you see small black color pieces fixed onto it with copper wires coming out. These are the silicon chips. VLSI is a process through which those chips are designed and fabricated. So VLSI Guru offers a, host, a list of courses for this particular technology which includes system verilog, synthesis, physical design, FPGA design, etc. For more details, you can refer to our web page. All the details of the VLSI courses are there. Embedded systems deal with computers that are fixed inside a complex equipment like medical devices, aeroplane, cars, rockets, microwave ovens, 3D printers, scanners, etc. You name the equipment. There will be a computer inside that. So that is called an embedded system or in other words, when the computer itself is becoming one of the parts of a large complex system, we call that computer as an embedded computer or an embedded system. Internet of Things is a new area where all computers, whether it is embedded or standalone, are connected through the internet to perform some task which otherwise would have been difficult to do. In the course of the presentation, I will give you more details of Internet of Things with few examples. Let's get into the overview of embedded systems. We, we offer a training program in the area of embedded systems and IoT covering all important aspects. This is done through a series of lectures, technical discussions, hands-on exercise, assignments, project and mock interviews. Let's see what is the agenda of this presentation. Go to the agenda about what are the things we are going to discuss here today. We'll start with the objective of this course. We will see whom are we targeting this course, what are embedded systems and IoT, what's the future of embedded systems, what are the components of an embedded system, how they are developed, the architecture, the ecosystems, sensors, embedded systems and IoT relationship and then we will get into the course syllabus the job opportunities and what kind of support we offer to the students once they complete the course. So let's start with the objectives of this course. The main objective of this course is to develop sound knowledge about embedded system and IoT. We do this or to do this or while doing this the students will understand the components of an embedded system. They develop sound knowledge and skills 
that is needed to build embedded system software. They also develop skills to understand sensors and actuators. In addition to that, they will develop good programming knowledge in C and Python. This programming knowledge can be considered as a base and students can develop skills on any other computer language which is needed for the embedded systems. The way we introduce C and Python is such that once you learn it, based on your learning, you can venture into any other programming language by yourself. Computer languages are evolving. Every year something new is coming and one needs to adapt. So through the fourth bullet, what we achieve is we give a solid foundation for the students through which they can build up knowledge on other programming languages. Let's see who are this target audience. Students who are doing master level courses and interested in learning embedded systems and doing IoT project as a part of their curriculum is are, are always welcome. Fresh graduates with engineering background, software and hardware professionals who are already employed in the industry and faculty and staff from engineering colleges and scientific institutions who want to learn about embedded systems and IoT. So these are the four broad categories of students we expect to come and join for this course. The whole curriculum is designed to take care of their interests. Let's see what an embedded system is. As I explained earlier, when a computer becomes a part of another large system or when a computer becomes one of the components of a large system, we call it as an embedded computer or an embedded system. The regular laptops, desktops, servers, etc. we see are not embedded computers. They are standalone computers. So, if you look at our regular automobiles, cars and expensive cars, Volvo buses, those kind of luxury buses, they have computers inside it doing various functions. If you look at a microwave oven which is usually found in at homes, do have a computer inside. Smart watches, smart TV, drones, aeroplanes, rockets, manufacturing equipments, digital camera, everything has got computers. But we don't get to see those computers. They are fixed somewhere inside. We know there is computer inside, but we don't see that. It's completely transparent to us. Such computers which are fixed inside some other device is called an embedded computer. They are in short embedded inside something else. So this is what is called an embedded computer or an embedded system. So what is IoT? To introduce IoT, let me take an example a situation on the road. Let's say you are driving to some location from home in your car. The car is IoT enabled or the car has an internet connectivity. Let's say the car is driving and the car is developing some problem. Let's say the temperature, the engine temperature is going up and you are not knowing. The sensors inside the car will detect that or the sensors of the car will read the temperature and sense it, send it to the onboard computer. The onboard computer knows what should be the, the regular temperature of, a, of the car, of the engine. That means what is the range of the temperature of the engine. If this exceeds, that means there is something going wrong. Either the coolant is faulty or something else is happening. That means the car needs a repair or it needs the help of a technical person. Before the driver comes to know, the onboard computers or the embedded computer inside the dashboard will detect this problem and will get in touch to the mechanic through the internet. And with the help of GPS satellites, it will give the position of the car. This will immediately alert the mechanic to send 
a support vehicle to the spot. So when the support vehicle is dispatched, this support vehicle will have the, the, uh, the necessary information to communicate with this car as well as the mechanic shop to locate where the car is. Quickly, the car, the support vehicle reaches here. That is when the driver has been, alerted, has been alerted. Yes, there is a fault in the engine. The car needs to be stopped. The mechanic is on the way. Before the driver notices and understands the problem, the mechanic is at the spot. In the meantime, the onboard computer would have collected all the other data about this car. How, what is the level of the fuel, what is the level of the oil, when was the car serviced, um, when was the car developed a, some kind of complaint earlier, what is the speed at which the car was going, whether the car was climbing uphill or coming uh, downhill. All this information would be available with the mechanic by the time the mechanic reaches the spot. So this gives some kind of comfort to the users of the car. Before the car breaks down and stops due to a technical fault, the mechanic is aware about that and the mechanic comes, comes to the spot and get the car fixed. In today's world, without the internet, what happens? You need to call. You won't even get to know what happens. You see the temperature, the engine temperature is going up for some reason. You tend to drive. After some time, the car stops. You don't know where you are. You will use your mobile phone to call the mechanic. The mechanic will ask you, where are you right now? You do not know the location. And it takes some time and a lot of panic you go through before you get in touch with the mechanic, give the correct location, and the mechanic comes to spot and repairs. Here, before the car breaks down, the onboard computer detects that and informs the mechanic with the help of internet. That means the car is connected to the internet, the mechanic is connected to the internet, and the dispatch vehicle is also connected to the internet. This is a classic example of an IoT application, or it's also called an IoT use case. And such kind of cars, which has got the ability to communicate with a mechanics computer without human intervention is called a connected car. Let's see another interesting IoT use case or an example of an IoT. Let's say you are driving a car or someone else driving a car and the car met with an accident, some kind of accident. The moment car goes and hits somewhere and causes an accident, the sensors detect that and the onboard computer is alerted. The first thing what the onboard computer will do is get to know the location of the car with the help of GPS satellites. Once the location of the car is known, the next thing the onboard computer will do is get connected to the internet. The moment it gets connected to the internet, the next thing the onboard computer will do is send an alert message to the nearest police station, to the nearest mechanic and nearest ambulance service station. Why? The police needs to be informed about the accident. The mechanic needs to be informed because the mechanic can come to the spot and do the needed help. And if there is an injury, the ambulance has to come to take the passengers to the hospital. So all the three people are informed without human intervention at this spot. Even if the driver is injured and unconscious, this will happen. So the police, the service mechanic and the ambulance service center gets the intimation about an accident and the correct location of the car. This will help, this will help the service station to send an ambulance immediately to the spot. The mechanic who got to know about the accident will send a towing truck to the spot so that the towing truck can remove the car from the accident spot so that the road is cleared. So whether the passenger in the car or the driver in the car is conscious or not, all the required people will be automatically alerted through the internet and the corresponding service is deployed to the spot. This is another classic example of IoT. Now, one question what students keep asking me, what is the relationship between IoT and embedded system? We all know computers are evolving every day. 
and that same thing is happening with embedded computers too. One of the largest impact happened in the last 10 years is the internet. Prior to that, computers used to be standalone. They were not networked. In the last 10 years, almost every computer in the world has got the networking capability or it means the computer can be connected to the internet and you can send and receive emails, send messages, browse the web or whatever you want you could do. So computers are no more standalone devices. They are connected devices. These computers finds application everywhere. Now, the moment when the embedded computers also get connected to the internet, we say the embedded computer is IoT enabled. Such computers, such embedded computers finds applications everywhere. We have a home-based device or a home automation which switches off and switches on the light based on the commands you send from your mobile phone. So your mobile phone has got internet connection, your home has got internet connection. You can take your mobile and start the required, invoke the required app and press the button. It will switch on and switch off the lights in your house. A classic example of a home automation. Someone has come to your house before you reached home. You can open the door from your mobile. It provided you know the person who has come to your house is authentic. Embedded computers find with internet connection find a lot of application in the internet space. Sorry, in the in the airlines and in the auto, aeronautic space. A classic example of that is the ticket reservation system. Let's say you want to book a ticket in an aeroplane to go from one place to another. What do you do? You can just switch on your computer, connect to the airlines portal, make the reservation, make the payment through your credit card and you get an SMS. You have to just go to the airport with that SMS and an ID card, your boarding pass will be printed and you can board the plane. This was not possible before the computers were connected to the internet. Earlier, you have to go to a travel agent, buy a ticket, pay the cash. It was a long process. In just in five minutes, you can make the ticket reservation today. This is a classic example of Internet of Things making things faster. Hospitals and healthcare. Doctors need not have to sit right next to the patients anymore. You have embedded computers which are fixed closer to the patient and they have sensors to track the vital parameters. So doctors can sit at some other location and keep monitoring more than one patient at the same time on how the patient is recovering or how the patient is responding to the treatment. Space and defense applications find large amount of use with, uh, with embedded systems and uh, embedded systems that are IoT enabled, manufacturing units, banks and insurance companies, banking application. You can do banking through your mobile. You can pay using your credit card. Automatically, the amount will be detected from your account. All these things are possible uh, because you have embedded as well as standalone computers which are networked. So, all embedded computers in today's world are networked or they have some kind of connectivity with the internet. That is why when we learn embedded systems, we need to understand the IoT concepts also. And that's why we designed the course as embedded systems and IoT. So what's the future of embedded systems and IoT? Gartner, one of the famous analysts in the industry, has given a prediction. The prediction is by 2020, the market spendings on IoT will be the order of $3 trillion. It's a big market. This means a lot more devices are going to get connected into the internet or connected to the internet. It's not just embedded systems. There will be a lot more small, small computers going to evolve and they are all going to get connected to the internet, including embedded systems. So let's see what are the key components of an embedded computer or an embedded system. 
just like we have the hardware and software and the connectivity for your desktop or a laptop. Embedded systems also have three main parts. The first one is the hardware with the CPU and all other parts. The second one is the software and the third one is the internet. In that respect, embedded computers don't differ much from the regular desktops and laptops. So how do you develop an embedded system? So we have three components, hardware, software, internet connectivity. Let's see how this is done. The hardware for an embedded system is usually supplied by one of the vendors, like hardware vendors, like ST Microelectronics, Broadcom, Raspberry Pi Foundation, or one of those companies. They provide the needed hardware board with inbuilt capabilities. So companies just go and buy the required hardware and build the computer. Software, software engineers with embedded systems knowledge that write the software and you are actually going to get trained in that particular sector. The networking, software engineers with software development capabilities on the networking part, develop applications that can talk to other computers over the internet. So that part is also done by software engineers. So software engineers write the, the business logic of the code. They also write the networking part of the code. That means if you want to become an embedded engineer or embedded software engineer, you need to learn how to write the code as well as you should have your networking fundamentals right. Then only you can write software that can communicate with the communicate through the internet. Let's see an architecture of an embedded system. Just like a regular computer, embedded systems also have a CPU, a primary memory, input, output, and the networking part. The key difference comes here in three places. One is in a traditional computer like a laptop or a desktop, there are only two, one or two input devices. One is your keyboard, another one is a mouse, and maybe a scanner will be attached. That's it. Whereas on an embedded computer, you may find a host of sensors connected to this. These sensors keep providing data to the computer. On the output side, you may not see a traditional screen. Instead, you will see a touch sensitive LCD screen, which again can act as a output as well as an input device. In addition to the display or a printer, you may find something called an actuators. They are nothing but electromagnetic relays, electric motors and those kind of things. They are called actuators, do some kind of action, converts an electrical signal into a mechanical operation. And the third difference comes is embedded computers don't come with hard disk. Instead, they come with memory cards. So these days, the cost of memory cards are dropping and the size is really growing. You can get memory cards like other 32 GB, 64 GB kind of thing. So those are the memory cards fixed onto an embedded computer. And the last part is the network interface. And there is one more element called ports. These ports are the places where the sensors and actuators are actually connected. So this is one of those places where it deviates from the traditional computer. So from a traditional computer perspective, an embedded system will have sensors at input and actuators. In addition to the display, there will be actuators as output. Instead of a hard disk, it will have a memory card. It will expose some of the ports to which you can connect the sensors. And just like any other computer, it will also have a network interface. What is a software development ecosystem? needed for an embedded computer. Ecosystem means it's the tools needed for the software development. Just like a regular computer, you need compilers, you need assemblers, you need debuggers, simulators and interpreters. So compilers convert your C program into machine, into machine language. Assemblers Take the assembly language program what you write and convert it into machine languages. Debuggers help to debug the software for some of the mistakes that are scripting. Simulators do a slightly different job. 
it's not always possible to get the right sensors and the right hardware etc a real world system so you need some kind of simulation the simulators do that job it simulates a real world kind of environment where you can test the software what you have developed interpreters do is something in the same lines of compilers compilers what they do is they read the complete program convert it into machine language and write it into a file you can run it any number of times whereas interpreter is slightly different interpreter reads one line at a time converts it into machine language and executes it it will never save the machine language into a file or machine language instructions into a file it just do line by line by line a very good python is a very good example of an interpreted language and c is a very good example of a compiled language you have something called a test bench where you test your system in the real world environment you have simulators to simulate the sensors what you are connecting to the system so this is how a complete software development ecosystem for an embedded system look like as i explained in this diagram apart from the keyboard you may have a set of sensors attached to the computer as well as a set of actuators connected to the computer so how do you connect them if you know a keyboard a mouse etc connected to the computer using usb a display is connected through a vga port or an hdmi port but when it comes to touch screen electric motors electromagnetic relays etc how do you connect to the computer so sensors and actuators are normally connected to the computers through the regular ports what i showed in this diagram these are the ports these are called the gpio ports of a computer of embedded system usually connected to that sensors send data to the computer using various protocols there are special protocols to uh, to communicate with the computer so just like our keyboard uses usb protocol sensors uses i to see spy uart etc to send and receive data from the computer so those are basically the protocols what is used for peripherals to compute to communicate with the computer so in short if you want to understand how a sensor is integrated you need to understand the protocol what that sensor is following that's a key part so how does this is the embedded systems and internet get together with the evolution of internet desktop computers are not stand alone devices instead they are connected to the internet just like the almost every embedded computer just like that almost every embedded computers are also connected to the internet one way or other software that runs on embedded computer need to communicate with other computers to exchange data a very good example is you do a banking transaction that data need to be communicated to the bank this is another example of an iot software engineers working on embedded system need to know network programming so that they can develop network based applications on embedded devices this is exactly what is covered under the topic of iot so here we have a credit card machine which is an embedded computer this has got a display this has got a keyboard and it's got a sensor to read your credit card you just swipe and enter your details this computer automatically communicates to the bank and does the transaction and prints the receipt for you this is a good example of a banking iot use case so one question i keep getting from students is girish what is the extent of knowledge or the hardware knowledge software engineers need to know to do embedded development the answer is all you need is the basic knowledge to understand the hardware board processor memory map ports etc that's it you do not have to learn circuit level or the chip level etc all you need to know is the basic understanding about what the board is all about what is a processor used what's a memory map and how many ports are there on that embedded board this is as long as you have a fairly good idea about the points i have quoted 
you don't need to go deep into the hardware chip level or the circuit level knowledge is not required to become an embedded developer so based on all these facts we have designed a course on embedded computers and iot so let's get into the details about this course or the syllabus so the course starts with an overview of embedded systems something little detailed than what we already discussed in this presentation which is followed by a refresher course on analog and digital systems so where i will introduce to you what an analog circuit is and what a digital circuit is what are the difference between them i will be covering uh, very detailed uh, topics like what is the difference between current and the voltage to that level i will be going then i will be taking you into the architecture of an embedded computer and how it differs from a desktop we will cover fundamentals of operating systems we'll talk about assemblers and interpreters i will teach you how to compile a c program on a embedded system from there onwards we are going to get into the c programming fundamentals c programming fundamentals are really required because on an embedded computers on an embedded computer you may have to write device drivers and do some kind of low level programming where you talk to the hardware through a set of protocols c provides a lot of features for that and that's exactly why we are teaching c programming fundamentals as a part of this course in addition to that c will set your foundations right your foundations on computer science will become really strong once you learn c we'll be covering data structures and case studies in c we'll be giving an introduction about object oriented programming in c++ from there we'll get into the rtos concepts a real time operating system so by the time you complete up to the 11th module you're fairly good enough to go and play with an embedded box i will be guiding you but you have sufficient knowledge to start working or start developing applications on an embedded computer now another aspect which i want to tell you is the development environment of an embedded system is also changing fast people don't have the time to write huge c programs compile it and uh, run it and test it out and fix all the bugs this is exactly where python steps in python is an interpreted language or it's called a script python provides lot of libraries to develop application on an embedded box lot of application means lot of application in fact there are some flavors of python which available in the market which does not even need an operating system so to get you right to the latest topics we will be covering some of the basic fundamentals of python and we will be asking you to do some small projects on the python so that you get the python concepts right we'll be covering the communication protocols that that sensors and actuators used to talk to the computer we'll be covering how to write computer programs which has got networking capabilities those are the iot kind of problems and in addition to this we'll be touching a very important topic which is the arm processor fundamentals why we are covering the arm processor fundamentals with the help of cort with the help of a arm processor called cortex m4 is many embedded systems which are developed in the world are making use of arm processor if you have a fairly good idea of arm processor that's it you can learn any board any hardware which comes on your way so as i mentioned earlier c programming gets you a good control over the computer science fundamentals learning arm processor fundamentals will get you a very good foundation on the hardware side of computers so if you see a new hardware a new embedded systems board you don't need too much of time to understand what it is just reading the manuals you will understand what it is and will start writing computer programs for that to enable you to that grade or that level 
we have introduced the ARM processor fundamentals. This is more slightly a hardware related course, but those who are without hardware knowledge need not have to worry about it. I will take you right from the basics. Now, having done all these things, you would definitely expect what are the job opportunities for embedded systems and IoT in India? Let's see what the prediction is. The number of units under, under the banner of IoT is expected to grow exponentially to 1.9 billion units in India by 2020. And this market is going to be about the size of 9 billion US dollars. That means by 2020, we believe industries such as utilities, manufacturing, automotive, transportation and logistics are expected to see highest adoption levels of IoT in India. They will all have embedded computers which are IoT enabled, standalone computers which are IoT enabled and you will see large deployments by 2020 happening in this sector. In addition to industries, other industries like healthcare, retail and agriculture are also expected to make significant progress in IoT. Healthcare, I already explained to you what is the role of IoT. Agriculture, it tracks the weather, tracks the soil moisture, track the vital parameters of a plant and then provide nutrition and water to it. That's where IoT finds application in agriculture. This means India need to continue to build the IoT capabilities across technology areas of tensor sensors to adapt to the rugged climate terrain along with the infrastructure. Today in India, we do not have too much of skills in this segment or in the IoT segment. And that gap is what we are filling through this course. So job opportunities are going to be extremely high in the coming years. So those who have really learned IoT properly don't have to worry about anything. They can easily find a job in, this, in the market. So what is the post once you complete the course? What kind of support does students can expect from us? Once a student is graduated, we assign a mentor. Most likely these mentors would be the previous students who graduated from VLSI Guru or they are currently working in the industry. They will help you to clarify a lot of your, of your doubts and they will let you know how to look for a job and details like that. Now you finish the course and you are going for an interview, you want to scan through a couple of lectures which are already delivered. You can always come to the institute and listen to the classes um, which you want to replay. Let's say you missed a class, you are unwell, you could not come. We are recording all the videos, all the lectures in the form of videos. You can always come back to the institute and listen to them. So that was a quick overview and an introduction to the IoT embedded systems and the IoT course offered by VLSI Guru. Thank you very much.